into three parts, narcotics, gambling, and prostitution. All three are under the control of one organization, a huge octopus called the Syndicate, whose dirty tentacles reach into every dark and corrupt corner of the country. But the most difficult for law enforcement agencies to police is the racket involving women, because it operates under many names and many camouflages. Who's the girl, Maxie? Why, hello, Sergeant. Uh, she's just some doll I met on the bus. Goodbye, honey. It was nice meeting you. I'll see you around sometime. Sergeant Brandon, vice squad. My partner, Sergeant Dunton. Where are you from, miss? Dallas. Why? You know what happens to transporters, Muggsy? Transporters? What are you talking about? We just met on the bus. What is this? Transporting a female you're not married to across the state line is a federal offense. Now listen, you. I'm a respectable mom. Here. If you don't believe it, just take a look. Better close it, you're liable to catch cold. Who are you bringing her in for, Muggsy? I tell you, Sergeant, you got this all wrong. Any doubt. All right, Muggsy, I'm gonna give you a break. Tell us whose payroll you're on, and we'll forget it's a federal rap. I don't know what you're talking about. I'll tell you what I'm talking about, the five years you're gonna get. And your protection won't do you any good with the federal boys, you know that. Well, what do you say? You'll kill me. Who will? I can't, I can't! Guess we might as well take him down the Federal Bureau, let them... Wait! Uh... If I spill, will you keep it quiet long enough for me to put some distance behind me? You got a deal. But what do I do? Put him in the car. I'll buy her a ticket back home, where she belongs. How do you know? You ain't never seen my home. Get out of here. Run. Go on, run! Stop! Slugged me and made a break for it. I hollered for him to stop, but I guess he was just too scared. All right, folks, let's clear out of here. Come on. For a couple of minutes, I thought we had the inside on all these broads flooding this town. If only the poor jerk hadn't decided to make a run for it. We should have known he'd be too scared to spill. Aren't they all? Did you ever try to figure how many blanks we've drawn? Every time we think we've come up with something, we wind up right back where we started, staring at a blank wall. Vince Malone's a smart operator. If it is Malone. It's got to be Malone. He's behind every other big operation in this town. Gambling, numbers, dope, you name it, and he's got his dirty finger in it. Chief, he's come up with a new racket. I'll knock your hat off. What's that? Public relations girls. What? These are broads Malone farms out to businessmen who entertain out-of-town buyers. Some of the big corporations put these broads under yearly contract. Pay them $25,000 or more. <laughs> Always some new angle. With an operation as big as Malone's, we can't even get a line on it. I think maybe this new racket might give me something. I'm going to try shaking down one of his phony model agencies. Okay. Stay with it. It's important. Eddie would like to see you, Mr. Malone. He says it's important. Send him in. Muggsy was just killed. What? Muggsy? Yeah, he was one of our transporters. He was caught by two V-men bringing in a trick from Dallas. They threw a scare in him, and he was going to talk. 
One of the V-men shot him. Well, that doesn't make sense. The V-man that shot him was a cop, Ben Dunton. He's on our payroll. Now, it makes sense. What happened to the broad? And she was shipped back home by that cop that's been giving us all the trouble. Brandon? You tried to reach him? Sure, I had one of our boys make the contact. And? Brandon worked him over. Told him if he ever came around again, he'd finish the job. Every week I pay out a fortune for protection. To make sure there will be no trouble with any of my operations. So what happens? One lousy, cheap cop that I can put in my pocket with a small change starts giving me headaches. Always there's some fly on the ointment. This Brandon is one fly I'd like to step on. Don't be so fast to step on people, especially cops. Bill? Yeah? I want you to get in touch with Marty in Detroit. Tell him to send me a girl here for a job. Any uh, particular girl? One of his best. She has to look sharp and have something up here. Otherwise, she's no good to me. Okay. Five days later, the girl selected by the Detroit branch of the crime syndicate arrived. I'm Carol Hudson. I just got in from Detroit. Oh, yes, we've been expecting you. Waiting for her at a new agency, which had been set up to serve as a trap for Sergeant Brandon, was Vince Malone. Miss Hudson from Detroit. You Mr. Malone? One of my boys, Phil Evans. Marty told me you had a job for me here. Get up. Huh? Get up. A walk. Walk away. What do you think? I think it's too good for a cop. All right. Sit down. Did I pass? My thermometer just broke. What do you want me for? Leaving yourself wide open. Shut up, Bill. We want you to take care of a cop. Take care You'll of You'll frame him. Oh. Look, Mr. Malone, I've been in the business a couple years now, and I've always managed to stay out of trouble. I'd like to keep it that way. Now, you just listen to me, and there'll be no trouble. If you know anything about me. <laughs> oh, I've heard a lot about you in Detroit, Mr. Malone. Good. And you should know that all my girls are well protected. It costs me, but it's worth it. To me and to them. Nobody pushes them around. What's in it for me? This frame is very important to me. You pull it off, and I'll take good care of you. Better than you ever did with Marty. Okay, Mr. Malone. I take care of the cop, you take care of me. Bill, go with her over to the place you got for her. You'll hear from me when I'm ready. Okay, baby, let's go. Probably early skid row. He's supposed to be a hard-working model who just got into town and is punching for a buck. I stashed this in here when I rented the joint. I thought maybe a bottle might come in handy. You've got big ideas, haven't you? Haven't you? Not for you, Sonny. Out. 
got nowhere to go. I said out. I didn't hear Malone say this was part of the deal. I'm uh, making it part. Sort of like a bonus. Sonny, you couldn't afford my kind of bonus. Okay, let's cut out this amateur night and Dixie stuff. Yeah, we'll cut it and auditions. I gave one for Malone. I passed. I'm not giving any more. So get out of here before I call Malone. Just what are you holding out for? I was hired to get a cop out of Malone's here. Not to get you out of mine. Now blow, Sonny. Malone knew that Sergeant Brandon was conducting an undercover investigation in an effort to identify the model agencies run by the syndicate. He also knew that it was just a matter of time before Brandon would come to the star model agency. You're here at five. When Brandon did arrive, Malone's men were ready and the trap was set. Yes, sir? I'm a photographer. I need a model for some art studies I'm doing. But you're lucky we have a new girl. She's not too experienced, but she's willing to learn. Because of that, the rate will only be $25 an hour. This is her photo. As you see, she's 36, 22, 36. Well, that, uh, she looks like just what I need. Uh, could she come up tonight about 8 o'clock? I'm sure she can. Name and address, please. Uh, James Harper. That's uh, room 402, Hastings Hotel. Uh, that's just off 9th. Carol will be there at 8. Good. Oh, and we take the money in advance, please. Oh, yes. 25, you say? Thank you. And call any time. Sure. Brandon had taken the bait. Evans immediately phoned Vince Malone to tell him that the frame was in progress. Hoping to secure evidence against the prostitution racket run by the syndicate, Sergeant Brandon, posing as a photographer, kept his rendezvous with Carol Hudson in room 402 at the Hastings Hotel. He had no way of knowing that the girl was there to frame him. I'm ready for you. I can see that. Say, you really know what you're doing, don't you? My profession. You know, there were a couple times that some of the fellas I posed for didn't even have film on their cameras. I guess you meet all types in your business, huh? How do you want me? What have you got in there? Swimsuit and pajamas. You can take your pick. Swimsuit will do fine. Here, you can change in here. I'll only be a minute. Where are you from? Dubuque. That's in Iowa. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Most people don't. They always say, what state's that in? How did you get here? Well, I saw an ad. And I wrote away, and they wrote back, and well, oh, it's a long story. Say, why is it everybody always wants to know how come I got into this business? Curiosity, I guess. How long have you been in town? Just a few days. Will uh, this do? It'll do, yeah. Huh. Well, now, uh, for the first one, uh, Suppose you stand with one knee on a chair, like this, all right? That's good. Let's straighten your legs. Good. Now try it with your uh, hand, with your left hand up. No, I don't like that. Put it down. You're not too bad up a little. Yeah, that's good. What's the rush? I've only got you for an hour. You got a date afterwards? Oh, no, but... Neither have I. So let's both relax a little. You got a drink? 
Just scotch. Well, that'll help. But the hour will be up pretty soon, and uh... how about a little dance first? Maybe that'll help you to relax. All right. You know, I I wouldn't mind spending a couple hours here if I could afford it. Doesn't the agency pay you? Yes, but I only get half of that twenty-five dollars you gave me. You have no idea how much money a girl needs in a strange town. I can imagine. I'm up to here with all sorts of bills. So, if you could spare a little extra, I could keep it for myself, and, and the agency wouldn't know a thing about it. And I'd pose for you as long as you want. Well, how about $20? Would that be enough? Mm -hmm. If uh, that's all you can spare. That's all. <laughs> You're nice. So you want to dance some more? Yeah. Right down to police headquarters. Put your things on. You're sleeping out tonight. Vice squad. So what? Ask the judge. Go in there and put your things on. Go ahead or I'll put them on for you. A few days later, Sergeant Brandon was summoned to Captain Brennan's office. Sit down. You uh, know Mr. Marshall from the city prosecutor's office? Certainly. How is he? Sergeant? That girl you arrested, what's her name? Carol Hudson. What about her? She claimed you made advances to her, Sergeant. She? After which you threatened to book her on a morals charge if she didn't give you $100. Sergeant, that is both extortion and entrapment. Why, oh, that pig. She has me for money. Can you prove it? Well, no, of course not. But this is like all the other cases, you know. All it usually takes is the testimony of the arresting officer. Usually, but not this time. I smelled a rat when she wouldn't plead guilty and pay her fine, like most of them do. I'm dropping this case. We can't. Charges of this sort are very serious, Sergeant. I don't know what she's trying to pull, but I'm clean. I want to believe that, but the department will have to investigate. It'll be turned over to the Division of Internal Affairs, after which you'll be brought up before the board. Okay. This will be a big waste of everybody's time. I hope so, Sergeant. For your sake and for ours, I hope so. The syndicate had done its work well. They had planted legitimate background for Carol Hudson. It withstood the severest questioning, and the girl was proving that the syndicate had not been wrong in selecting her. Then I came out in my swimsuit like he asked me to, all ready to pose for him. Instead, he asked me to have a drink with him. Then he asked me to dance. Did you? Oh, no, sir. He said I was a model, not his girlfriend. That I was up there on business. What did Sergeant Brandon do then? He got very mad. He slapped me. That's when he told me he was with a vice squad. And that I'd better come across with $100 or he'd, he'd run me in. Then what did you do? I didn't know what to do. I was almost tempted to pay it. And I, I decided I, I couldn't let him intimidate me. I just couldn't. Or I'd be no better than what he said I'd be accused of. That's when he arrested me. Thank you. That'll be all. Did Sergeant Ben Dunton come to the chair. And 
Whitey told me to wait in the car for him in case he made an arrest. What happened when he brought Miss Hudson down to the car? Did she say anything to you? Yes, sir. I heard her say that she wasn't going to be intimidated by him. Did you hear anything else? Yes, sir. Whitey, uh, that is Sergeant Brandon, told her to keep her mouth shut if she knew what was good for her. Well, did you ask Sergeant Brandon anything about this? Yes, sir. Later, when we were alone. Well, what did he say? He said not to pay any attention to her, that she was a dope, and that he'd given her a chance to clear herself, but she wouldn't take it. I see. Did anything of this nature ever occur before? Yes, sir. Lots of times. Why didn't you say anything to your superiors about this, Sergeant? I couldn't. Whitey was my friend. Ben, you lying... Sit down. <laughs> You're gonna let it go, just like that? You're letting them make suckers out of you and me, and the whole force. The committee didn't see it that way, Whitey. The evidence said you were guilty. But you know my record. What do you think? Look, I'm a cop. I work for a salary just like any other cop. I'm not being paid to judge you. I asked you a question. What difference does it make what I think? You mean you might get your hands dirty by admitting the truth? You know better. And you know that I was railroaded. Okay, Brennan. You keep your hands clean. I won't bother you anymore. Just how we got fouled up so many times? How long were you on a payroll? Since we made vice. Six years. Okay, look, Ben. So you took their juice, but I was your partner for six years. Your friend. Ben, how could you help them bust me? How? I had no choice. It was either you or me. You mean you were so money-hungry that you jumped the fence? But you think it's easy to send three boys to college on a cop's salary? And the only other thing that you could do is stick out your hand? Yeah. yeah. Now I can't sleep nights. It's, when the phone rings, I don't know whether it's headquarters or the organization. They got me caught, but good, like I, I had a ring through my nose. You know, you could go to the captain and clear me. I thought about it. Kill the wife and the kids. If you're thinking of telling the captain about this, don't. I just deny I said it. I tell him you were trying to get even with me for testifying against you. That figures. Can I go now? Yeah, you can go. I hope you can sleep nights. It's open. You did a good job. A real good job. Thanks. for you. I've had propositions before. Not like this one. You, uh, like money, don't you? If I wanted glory, I'd have joined the wax.
won't have to float anymore. And the personal payroll? More than you ever saw in Detroit. And you get to keep what you get. You don't have to split with anybody. I guess I ought to feel flattered. No. Everybody knows I give for what I get. But you go on my payroll. You don't horse around with anybody else. I buy everything, including loyalty. That makes us even. I give for what I get, too. <laughs> you know, they told me you were sharp. You've got it where it counts. I could use somebody to keep an eye on things where the girls are concerned. How does our deal read? Pleasure and business? I'll pay off for you. Anything else you want to know? Yes. What? When do I move out of this crummy joint? <laughs> I decided to come here. Oh, I'm sorry about that, honey. I wanted to, but it... Oh, I know. You had to stay for that crazy hearing. How did you know about that? It was in the papers. Man, that policeman must have been real gone to accuse you of something like that. How did you know where to find me? Oh, your address was in the papers. The desk clerk there told me where to find you. Oh, wow, this place is really something. You oh. like it? Like it? Well, it's just the living end. How, uh, how long are you planning on staying? Oh, just a few weeks. A few weeks? Well, it's all right, isn't it? Oh, of course, hon. Of course. It's just that I'll be gone a good part of the day working. Oh, you don't have to worry about me. I can take care of myself. I'll bet you can. Come on. I'll show you where you can put your things. Wow, this pad really swings. Different from home, huh? Oh, you're not kidding. You take this side. Oh, wow. Are these all yours? Uh-huh. Gee, they must have cost plenty. Boy, I could really make the kids back home flip with this. You've changed a lot in the two years since I last saw you. Carol, would you teach me how to be a model like you? Forget it. You're going back home. I'll get it. Some answers. Boy, you must be the highest paid model in the business. I do all right. Now you get... Well, what have we got here? Some new little trick you're breaking in? Shut your mouth. She's my sister. She just got here today. I bet your little sister is real proud of you. Aren't you, kid? Who is this man, Carol? He's a detective. Whitey Brandon. I beg your pardon. Former detective. Now, just a plain, ordinary, busted cop. You pig. Thanks for busting me. I'll call the police. No, no, don't. 
No, he's right. Tramps don't want anything to do with cops, do they? Your sister only wanted one cop. Me. Take your hands off of me. Stop it! Who was behind that frame-up? You crazy cop, no one. It was Malone, wasn't it? I don't know what you're talking about. You pig. You dirty liar. No! Leave her alone! Sure, kid. It's all right. I just wanted to find out if she was more scared of me or Malone. Now I know. Get out. Go on, get out! Sure. But you tell Malone I'm not finished. With either of you. Don't mind him. He's just blowing his top because I busted him and they testified against him. Well, who is this Malone? I never heard of him. I have to leave on business, honey. I'll get dressed, then why don't you go in and get a little rest, okay? I'll be right back. Hudson's apartment? Yes, it is, but she's not in right now. Oh, wait. I work for the same agency she does. Oh, well, come in, come in. She ought to be right back. How come I haven't seen you before? Oh, oh I just got in. Aren't you a little young for, um... Who brought you? Brought me? Don't you think I'm old enough to travel by myself? Yeah, honey, you're old enough. What made you come to Carol? Well, why shouldn't I? She's my sister. Hmm? Your sister? <laughs> well, who did you think I was? Well, I thought you were one of, one of the models. Oh. Oh. Well, I wish I were. It must be the dress. It's Carol's. I was just trying it on. Uh, what do you do? I just graduated from school. Been anyone like you around when I was in school, I wouldn't have played hooky so much. <laughs> is it is it hard to be a model, Mr. Uh... Evans, Phil Evans. No, all you need is a good figure. Do you do you think that I have a good enough figure? Yeah. You got. Carol must make a lot of money. If I thought I could be as good as she is... How does Carol feel about it? Oh, I'm not a child any longer. I'm old enough to do what I want. <laughs> okay. If I ever hear of a spot where they are looking for someone like you, I'll let you know. Gee, thanks. I better get out of this before Carol gets back. I'll wait around a little while longer. She ought to be back any moment. Then he started pushing me around. Slapped me. A real knucklehead. I'll take care of it. It won't happen again. He doesn't bother me, but with a kid sister around... If you don't want her to know the truth, send her home. But how can I, Vince? What excuse can I give? Ah, stop worrying. Kid will know nothing. Get in. I don't want to have to use this. Hello, Brandon. Malone. You know me? 1935, finger man for Kalati in Chicago. 1940, syndicate contact man. 1945, fixer. All right, all right, you know me. I don't have to waste time. Sit down. Where did you think he would get you slapping the Hudson girl around? <laughs> it got me here, didn't it? Yeah? 
Malone, you cost me a job. I figure you owe me one. Supposed to show you. You live long enough, you see everything. You wouldn't take a fix. Now he wants to work for me. Oh, no. I work for you, with you. Spell it out. I don't want a handout. I want a piece. <laughs> You're crazy. You gave me a reputation, I might as well cash in on it. I know this vice racket inside out. And I've got contacts, too. Contacts that you'd never get. <laughs> a lousy, busted cop out of a job. And he talks contacts in a piece. Go on, get out of here, I'm busy. I thought you were smarter than you are, Malone. It's not gonna be as hard breaking you as I thought. Look, cop, get out. I'll get to you. I'll get to you and your girlfriend. I'm not a cop anymore. I can do things my way now. That night, as Brandon left his apartment, Malone's men were waiting for him. Violence was their answer to the threats he had made. to keep this on, Doc. Well, you can back in about a week. We'll take another x-ray. I'll be able to tell you better then. Thanks. Hello, Whitey. What are you doing here? Who did it? What's the difference? You're still keeping your hands clean? Are you going to listen? There's something that doesn't add up to me. What's that? Your sister. What about my sister? I'm sorry, Whitey, but I dug into your personal life. I... I had to satisfy myself. You were what? 16, 17, when she killed herself? Oh, that's the difference. How'd she get into the racket? She... fell for some pretty boy. A louse. He sold her a bill of goods. And when she wanted to get out, it was too late. She couldn't get out. So... She was only 22 then, wasn't she? Is that why you asked for the vice squad? I've hated everybody in this racket ever since. Yes, that's what I mean. That's what I couldn't get through my craw. It just didn't add up. Why should anyone like you take juice? I told you it was a frame-up. Are you saying that Ben was in on it, too? Malone was back of it. I proved it. I made him come to me to protect his girl. His girl? The same one who framed me. I roughed her up, figuring that she'd yell for help. You say Malone came to you? I tried to con my way into his setup in a real big way. He wouldn't go for it. They roughed you up instead, huh? Well, where do you go from here, Whitey? Looks as though I've struck a dead end. If I have to play it alone. Whitey, I want Malone. I want him and his whole dirty bunch. I'd give anything to nail him. You have something in mind? It'll take cooperation. You'd have to go to the commissioner. The commissioner? You're asking a lot. I'll need a lot. Brandon explained his plan in detail to Captain Brennan. He wanted to make it appear that he had gone into direct competition with Malone, operating his own phony model agencies with greater influence and protection than Malone had. His object was not only to clear his name, but to weaken Malone's standing in his own organization and make the syndicate bosses come to him. Brennan knew the plan was dangerous, but it did have a chance. He agreed to go along with it. First, 
Brandon rented offices for his model agencies in several large business buildings. These would be the agencies set up in direct competition to Malone. Brandon was ready now to begin his drive against the crime syndicate. I'll get it, honey. Hello? Who? What do you want? Come up to my apartment in a half an hour. Listen, you be here, I'll come up and drag you out, sister or no sister. I'm sorry, honey, but I won't be able to have dinner with you tonight. I've got to meet someone on business. Why don't you grab a bite alone, and I'll try to be back as soon as I can. Okay? Okay. I didn't come up here to drink your liquor, Brandon. What do you want? Come on, have a drink. Sit down, relax. Carol? I'm going to do something for you. Break my arm? Oh, things change. And so do people. I've gone into business. What kind of business? Malone's kind of business. Models, public relations, girls. You name them, I supply them. For an ex-cop who used to roust the girls... So I played Honest Joe. Where did it get me? I learned the hard way. But I learned... Why are you telling me all this? Because I need somebody like you. Somebody to manage these chicks I've brought in. Somebody to tip me off about Malone's contacts. I thought you said you were going to do something for me. You stick with Malone, you're going to get hurt. With me, you'll be protected. And you make more money with me than you'll ever make with Malone. So, like I say, I, I need you. And you need me. You don't need me. You need a head shrinker. Don't say I didn't warn you. All right. Now I'm going to give you a little warning. If you want to stay alive, don't buck Malone. Last time, they only cracked your ribs. Next time, they'll crack your head. If you change your mind, you know where I live. does he think he is? He thinks you go into this business like you open a shoe store? You need contacts, protection, lawyers. He says he's got them. Maybe he figures he's gonna scare you into cutting him in. If he even tries to open up, he'll be closed the next day. That's all I give him, just one day. Hello. Oh, yes, Whitey. When? In about a half an hour. She's there now. Yeah, one of my men saw her go in. And remember, you have to make it tough for Malone's lawyer to spring her. Keep her there until I want her out. In an effort to create the impression that he had greater behind-the-scenes political influence than Malone, Sergeant Brandon had the police start a campaign of raids against the few known racket agencies, closing them down while his remained open. Just trying to say that it may be he's not kidding about his protection. I told you once, I don't need you to tell me anything. Yeah? There's a Mr. Whitey Brandon calling you. Hello? Hello, Malone. I just thought you'd like to know your star model agency is being closed as of right now. And that's only a starter. Before I'm through with you, you won't have a joint left open. That's enough, Mushy. Drucker. Well, where's Carol? They're holding her without bail as a material witness. What kind of double talk are you giving me? They're giving it to me in there. I don't care what they're giving you. You're my lawyer. I tell you to get her out, you get her out. It'll take time. Somebody's putting on pressure. 
Yeah, I know who it is. This is I pay you to take care of things for me. It's up to you to figure how, but do it. Otherwise... Hey, there's Carol. Who got you out? That ex-cop, Whitey Brandon. He got me in and he got me out. Drucker couldn't and he could? You're trying to show me he's got more influence than I have. He must know somebody we don't. He isn't going to know him for long. Drop me off the office, Phil. And you take Carol home. How about me coming up for a drink? Try the nearest bar. I thought you were a smart broad. How long do you think Malone's going to hold out? This whole thing's got him shaky. I'm sure he'll be able to handle it. Well, he better. The top men will move him out and put somebody else in, and it could be me. Is that why I should ask you up for a drink? What am I, poison or something? You know how I felt about you from the first day you got in? And you know how I felt about you. So are even. You learn the hard way, don't you? You've got a lot of learning to do yourself. I don't take a pushing around like that from any pig. And stay away from me and you won't be pushed. Hello, Ben. I've got to kill you. Hello? He wants you out of the way. I see. I'm supposed to take you down for questioning. You resisted, so I had to kill you. Sweet, isn't it? Yeah. That's perfect. Well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you do it? I can't do it. Not to you. No. We're pals. Why do they keep piling it on? Piling it on me. How much more am I supposed to take? Why do I can get out of this mess if you'll stop fucking Malone? I'll tell him I scared you into closing up shop. I'm not going to stop, Ben. You can't beat him. I'm doing it. And I guess I'm doing it real good. Or he wouldn't have sent you. I hate to think I got you in this lousy racket because I turned you in. It didn't help. It gave me a sour taste for friends. Whitey, please, run away. Go anywhere. I'll tell Malone you disappeared, that I couldn't find you. I'm not running, Ben. So I guess you got to kill me. I can't. You got one other out. You can go to Brennan and clear me. Tell him how you've been hooked up with Malone. It's either that or killing me. Take your choice. Do you think it's going to end with me? Because it's not. One of these days, your wife is going to get wise to you. And Malone won't care. Captain, this is Sergeant Dutton. I'm sorry to bother you at home, but I have something very important to tell you. Yes, Captain, I'll be right over. I know I'm in no position to give advice, but Whitey, get out of this racket. Sooner or later, they'll get you. 
either the department or Malone. Remember you, Mr. Evans? Big agency man's coming up to my uh, place. He's looking for someone uh, new and young. Yeah, a teenager. It's for line of dresses, uh, magazine layout. So I thought of you. Well, gee, that's terrific, Mr. Evans. Uh huh, sure, I can come right over. Okay, it's apartment 36, Fairmont. I'll be waiting. Okay, baby. Come in. Hi, am I late? No, early. Advertising man isn't even here yet. Oh, good. It'll give the butterflies in my stomach a chance to settle down. Gee, I hope he likes me. Any guy who wouldn't like that kind of stuff hasn't been taking his vitamins. Carol's dress, huh? Uh-huh. She isn't home. Yeah. She's with Malone. Malone? Yeah. You know. Vince. Vince Malone? Well, I've read about him. He's a racketeer. Carol said she didn't know him. What would she be doing with him? Well, let's put it this way. You aren't exactly uh, playing quite cheesy. You're lying. You think so? Ask her. Well, I'm going home. I'm not going to listen to this. <laughs> Stay here. Bad enough to get the brush from your sister. I'm not going to take it from some wacky kid. You're hurting me. Sure. Maybe it evens the score with Carol. There's nothing to be afraid of, kid. I'm a... You've got to grow up sometime. Wait, let me go! Don't try that again. What's to get so upset about? It's all in the family. Carol and Malone, you and me. Stay away from me! Keep away! This is Carol Hudson. State Hospital. I'll be right down. <laughs> Stay with her too long. I gave her a sedative. Who did it, honey? Who did it? Phil Evans. Who? Phil Evans. Phil. But how did you do? He said he wanted to hurt me because I was your sister. told me about you and Malone. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I didn't want you to know. He 
couldn't have done any good for you to know. Where's Miss Hudson? She's inside. Miss Hudson? I'm Captain Brennan. I thought you might know where we can find Phil Evans. You didn't get him? No, but we've got an all points out for him. I want you to get him. I want you to kill him. I heard, Carol. And I'm sorry. Did they find him yet? But if I can help. You? What can you do? Phil is one of Malone's boys, isn't he? I can knock them all off if I have your help. How? Get me a list of Malone's agencies. Are you afraid? All I want is Phil, not Malone. All I care about is finding him. How did you know? Phil told me. Phil told you? Yeah. Came to me for help to duck the cops. Where is he? What's the difference? What's the difference? She's my sister. You know what he did to her, a kid? They're all kids at some time or another. Where is he, Vince? I've got to know. Look, Carol, you know I don't yell copper. Not in my business. I've got to find him. Where is he, Vince? Where is he? Cut it. You know, nobody in the organization runs to the cops for anything. All I got to do is yell copper. And Marty and Frank and the others cut my head right off. I don't care about you or the organization. Or Marty or Frank or anyone else. The kid will get over it. Go back home, nobody will know. She'll know. Isn't that enough? Now you listen to me. Phil knows my operation inside out. I turn on him, he can turn on me. You understand? So you just forget about Phil. I'm a smart girl. Stay that way. What happened could happen to anyone. A couple of days, everybody will forget. Sure. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes? What made you change your mind? As far as I'm concerned, Malone's no better than Phil. You still want that list of agencies? Okay. I'm ready to get it for you. But I have to get it back in a hurry. Listen, just give us time to photostat it and you'll have it back where you got it from inside of an hour. Kid, thanks. This is gonna kick Malone right in the teeth. Later, three men representing the crime syndicate's executive council flew out for a conference with Malone. They came from Detroit, St. Louis, and Chicago. 
What I want to know is, how did this joker know which were our agencies? That's something I can't figure. I keep the list in a book. It's in the safe. Hidden behind this picture. Nobody busted into the safe, and the book is still there. What happened to your protection? I've spread juice around like it was water. I thought I had everybody sewed up. I just can't figure it. Seems to me you haven't been able to figure out a lot of things lately. So Brandon's got a better end than you have, and he's got better protection. He's been doing a pretty good job of squeezing us out. Maybe this is the guy we need. I don't know what you got in mind, but this is my territory here, and I don't split with it. Could be maybe he doesn't want to split it with you. Maybe we better have a talk with this Brandon, feeling him out. Yeah. Get word to him to be here in the morning, 10 o'clock. We'll make it interesting for him. Very interesting. Later that day, Eddie told Brandon that the top boys from the syndicate were in town and wanted to talk to him. Brandon agreed to the meeting and alerted Captain Brennan. Oh, Miss Hudson, I've got some good news for you. We just picked up Evans. He was hiding out in the motel over in the north side. You're going to throw the book at him? Yes, and we'd like to have you at the trial. You'll be available? You can count on me. I wanted to clear out, but I just hung around hoping to get a line on Phil. Now that you've got him, oh, I... Oh, don't pull out. Not yet. Why not? Come in here with me for a minute. There's someone I'd like you to talk to first. Don't tell me you've got him on your payroll, too. He's got me on his. I think it's safe to let you in on it now, after what they did to your sister. I'm working with the captain. Then your whole setup's been a routine. Now I know how you're able to top Malone all the way down the line. Right. I want you to know, because I got a chance to put the syndicate out of business for good. But to do it, I need your help. That's why I told you not to walk out on Malone now. Well, how do you feel about it? I like nothing better than to see the cops catch up with all those creeps. Good. Now, here's the deal. I've been invited to come to a meeting of the Syndicate's top brass tomorrow. I know. Can you be there? I can arrange it. Why? There's 10,000 feet of wire in this. Enough to record two hours of what goes on at that meeting. I know they'll search the place to see if it's bugged, but I've got a way for you to get it in there so they won't find it. Carol Hudson planted the tape recorder in a spot where she knew every word spoken in the office would be recorded by the tiny microphone. Any of you boys like a drink? The usual. I pass. Scotch and soda. The same. Glad you could come, Whitey. I want you to meet some friends of mine. There's Marty Hefner from Detroit, Frank Burke from St. Louis, and Leo Dempsey from Chicago. Uh. And I think you know Carol. Yeah, we met. Uh, don't worry, it ain't bugged. We went over it from top to bottom this morning. You want a drink, too? Okay, Carol, wait outside. Brandon, you're trouble. I told Malone I had a big in. He wouldn't listen. So you got a big in with the girls. Bigger than we have now. Is that all you want? Keep talking. You're a lone wolf, Brandon. You're strong hair, but it's pain as compared to what we can do for you. What can you fellas do for me? I can't do for myself. Look, girls are only one part. We control gambling, jukeboxes, dope, and that's where the real money is. <laughs> what do you need me for? You're a smart operator. We can always find room in the organization for a smart boy. What are you so nervous about? Nothing. I was just wondering how long that meeting was going to last. What do you care? Just sit down and take it easy. So you say we have everything covered. We'll give you 10% of the gross as you're cutting. Uh-huh. All right, what happens to him? Why well, worry about him? I gave him a chance to cut me any turn me down. Now I'm turning him down. I don't want partners. We're the only partners you'll have to worry about. We'll put him in a spot out west. Make it 15% and you can count me in. Okay, 15%. Let's have a drink on it.
clean out. Carol usually carries some. Hey, wait. Here. Not mine. Not my Brian. <laughs> Your brand, Leo? Hey, what is this? You guys bug me? Somebody bugged us. Tell her to come in. Carol? You too, Eddie. I think this belongs to you. Who'd you do it for? Who put you up to it? It was you and him all the time, huh? Stop your minutes. Give us a couple of minutes to clear out and then take care of him. Once a knucklehead, always a knucklehead. Bring the car around. Hold it! We'll get it. You better take care of that arm. What about the others? We grabbed them when they came out, but I don't know how long we can hold them. You just play the music on that recorder. You'll find you got enough on it to hold them for a long, long time. Are you all right, Miss Hudson? Yeah. Thanks. It's okay. I owed it to you. <laughs> Law enforcement agencies now had the evidence they needed to crack down on the crime syndicate from coast to coast. Because of her cooperation with the police, Carol Hudson was exonerated of any complicity. She was going back to her hometown where she could start her life over again. She and her sister were forgotten now, but one man remembered to say goodbye. <laughs> 